Narcissists and psychopaths leave their victims feeling completely empty and void of any worth. This is the pattern in every single one of their relationships. Psychological abuse leaves behind very long-lasting feelings of worthlessness and inadequacy, a sense of being separate from love. And after this, it is common for PTSD or CPTSD to develop in the survivor as they replay every moment of the relationship, every second in their mind over and over and over again. The feelings of worthlessness and inadequacy are so unbearable that the mind is desperately trying to figure out what happened to ensure that it never happens again. And the mind slowly develops this illusion of control by analyzing everything and trying to figure out all of the why answers. And from here, all sorts of protective walls start to pop up. Things such as anger, resentment, fear, and blame. And while all of these are completely 100% understandable, they can also block us from the soft love that remains in our hearts. And left in place, these walls can slowly lead to all sorts of personality changes, including numbness, people-pleasing, excessive solitude, over-accomplishing, perfectionism, constant battles, and ultimately depression, anxiety, insomnia, and even paranoia. And in order to unravel this puzzle, we must get to the root cause of these unbearable feelings. And like I always say, I highly recommend working with a professional therapist through this process. Remember these, these feelings, they were so intense that your body actually put walls up to stop them from being felt, but they're still stored inside your body as this is the nature of PTSD. The journey, I really believe, it, it starts whenever we become aware of what is really going on in our body and what is going on of our mind. Instead of living within the confines of these protective mechanisms, we start to notice them. And at first, you may be inclined to judge or dislike these parts of yourself, but that is not the purpose of this work. Instead, we begin to kind of develop a curious awareness as to what is going on. So if we become judgmental or angry with ourselves in the process, we include that in, in our awareness and kindness to ourself. When we work through trauma, it is important to, to pay attention to our bodies, our heart, our muscles, our gut, which have a lot of their own wisdom. It's frustrating to, uh, to communicate with body sensations like numbness or tension, but we can start with the knowledge that our bodies put up these defenses to protect us from some really overwhelming stuff. And this can also happen with the sensation of like you feel out, like you are an observer outside of your body. It's called uh, derealization and uh, depersonalization. And by acknowledging all of this stuff in this noble effort, we can begin to offer a lot of kindness and care within these sensations. And given that psychological abusers, they did minimize and dismiss your emotions. So it's going to be kind of common to process this and sometimes think this is stupid or I'm making this all up and I'm to blame. In fact, you might notice a lot of your healing has done has been done from the mindset of what's wrong with me. And again, just include these in your awareness. It won't be easy at first because these doubts and these anxieties have been etched deeply in your thinking. But as you embrace these thoughts every single day, your self-awareness will grow stronger. As it grows stronger, your body, it will begin to unravel these old wounds piece by piece, bit by bit. 
And these feelings, they are likely to be uh, overwhelming and intolerable at first. And they may wake you up in the middle of the night feeling stronger and like this more real kind of feeling of, of awareness. But the more intense these feelings become, the more intense your own awareness becomes because it recognizes the truth and that no human being, yourself included, ever deserved to feel or be treated this way and it will keep fighting for you and with time you may start to notice how harsh and analytical you have been with yourself and you may start to regard your old protective mechanisms um, with gratitude and understanding rather than loathing and you may start to see yourself as a real human being with real feelings who is suffering and the more that you see these truths, the, the, the stronger your awareness, your kindness to yourself will grow and eventually it will become a loving awareness and you will see yourself as somebody who is trying hard and someone who has been trying hard for far, far too long. And with time, that awareness becomes stronger and any doubt or fear that you have had, it will deflect them like flies. This is the ultimate gift of this work. And by the end of it all, you have something that you have never had before, a loving awareness that your heart can surrender to completely, a self-soothing mechanism. You can rest finally, knowing that your needs, knowing that nothing needs to be done. You are loved as you are. And you you gotta you gotta understand. This, this work, it can take months, it can take years, it can take decades. It's not a one-time aha moment, but rather a slow shift in the way that we think and we feel and we relate to ourselves. And the more we integrate these techniques into our lives, the more natural they become and eventually old habits are replaced with new ones. My name is Sarah Ann Brown, and this is Narcissistic Abuse 101.